Good evening, online viewers, all of our members, our visitors, and if you're joining us for the first time, a special welcome. This is our online version of our midweek Bible study, originating from the Eccles Assembly of God, located right here on the east bank of Demerara. Lots 57 to 59 East Bank, Demerara. Again, we welcome you and we pray, God, that the truths we desire to share with you this evening will prove to be very instructional, inspiring, and you know, as the Word of God says, uh, that uh, the truth of the Word of God is that which will bring deliverance and freedom. Let me quote the words of Jesus Know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So welcome, and before we proceed, I ask you to join with us in a word of prayer. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we thank you for the privilege and this opportunity of sharing with our friends in this midweek Bible study. We commit all that is to be said and done into your big and powerful hands. We pray for the anointing of your Holy Spirit. We pray, O oh God, for wisdom. And we will not fail to give you all the praise, the thanks, the honor, and the glory for that which will be accomplished for the good of those viewing and for the glory of your name. We pray and ask these mercies in the precious name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, once again, this telecast originates from the Echoes Assembly of God. And uh, for those of you that are joining us for the first time, last week we began to examine the topic of the crisis of the cross, the crisis of the cross. We're into the Christmas season, sorry, we are into uh, the Easter season and uh, it is needful that we spend some time together reflecting on the importance of this season and more particularly on the crisis that Jesus endured on his way to the cross. Now, we did make the point last week that from the cradle to the cross, there were many crises in the life and in the ministry of Jesus Christ. Uh, in fact, Jesus was on the cross before he was nailed to the cross. Example, uh, the word says that uh, he came unto his own and his own received him not. That was the crisis of rejection. Again, there was religious opposition. His teachings, his message didn't sit well with the religious authorities of his day. They sought every opportunity to condemn, to criticize. So there were many crises in the life and ministry of Jesus. Uh, we sought last week to remind you that uh, crisis, the word crisis, is not necessarily or purely, exclusively a negative expression. Because crisis, as we would see from the Word of God, is a time of opportunity. Yes, it is a time of opportunity. And in this global crisis, which is affecting each and every one of us, we have an excellent opportunity uh, to draw closer to God and to receive the strength, the grace which we need to go through this, knowing that God has not forsaken us. He has promised that He will never leave us nor forsake us. So, crisis is a time of opportunity. And it is also a time of revelation. Now, many of the major Hebrew names 
attributed to God Almighty emerged out of times of crisis, one crisis or another. Let's take, for example, the name Jehovah Jireh. That emerged out of a time of crisis when Abraham the patriarch proved that God is indeed the provider. Now, so far, we have been examining uh, some of the crises in the life of Jesus based on the very definition of this word crisis. And just by way of quick review, the word crisis is defined as a time of decision, a time of decision. It is also defined as a, a time of intense difficulty or danger. And this Holy Week in which uh, the scriptures record what is referred to as the Passion of Christ, we can see from the account in the Gospels that it was indeed a time of intense difficulty for Jesus Christ. Then it is also regarded as a time of risk or stress. And then, thankfully, it is also a turning point when an important change takes place. So this is just to review what we have been discussing last week as we began to examine the crisis of the cross. The cross, of course, is a reference to the cross on which Jesus Christ died for the sins of all mankind. Now, I don't know which one will uh, make his or her contribution. By the way, to my left is my wife, Elaine, Minister Elaine Pereira. To her left, we have Deacon Gregory Citram. To my immediate right, we have Brother Paul December, Deacon Brother Paul December. And to his right, we have uh, Deacon Andre Lester Davis. Which one of you will jump in at this point in time? Good afternoon, viewers and friends. And I would like to comment at this moment. After we have selected this, this topic, I realized that it's one that, that caused me to reflect even in my personal life. And hopefully during these sessions, I trust that uh, based on our discussions, we would, we would, it would give us good reason to reflect on the crisis and, and those crisis situations that we might have experienced even in our own lives. When we look at the definition and we consider these uh, points, key terms like intense difficulty, risk and stress, turning point, and reflecting on, on one's personal life, we would want to agree that over the course of our life there would have been some crisis situations and many of those crisis situations have contributed to the successes, if I might add, um, in our lives. Because as we face them, they would have proven themselves to be uh, strategic decision points in our lives, stages or times in our lives when we would have been forced to, to address, arrest uh, a situation and make some decision that that if we reflect, would have been turning points, key points, crisis points in our lives that have contributed to where we are. And you know, this is what I found as I reviewed um, this, this discussion. And like Jesus, it has helped me to, to see how those crisis situations might have contributed in a big way to where I am at as, a, as an individual. Just add to that sterling contribution. None of us can escape the crises of this life, not even Christians. Yes, yes. COVID-19 is not only affecting what some may term the ungodly. It is affecting every one of us. And this reminds me 
of a verse in the Word of God. All those that will live what? Godly in Christ Jesus shall. There's no option there. That's imperative. Shall suffer persecution. Yeah. And as I usually say, yeah. if you are a Christian and you have not yet gone through any crisis, just be patient and wait your turn. All those that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But at the end of it all, like Deacon Lester was saying, those crises can make us better persons yes. as long as we have the right attitude, as long as we keep looking to God who has promised that he will never ever allow us to be tested above that which we are in. Who else would like to? Uh, 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 yes, good evening viewers. I would like to chime in on that and speak a little bit, comment a little bit about the whole idea of your attitude in the time of a crisis. And would like to point out, I know it's close to Easter, so it would be in order for me to point out and uh, mention Jesus' attitude while he was in the middle of the Easter season, so to speak. Uh, the, the Bible tells us in the book of Mark, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. And the Bible tells us that he was deeply troubled in spirit. But in all of that, he prayed, he spent time praying and he said, Father, let this cup pass from me, mm. but if, um, but not my will rather, but thine be done, and submitted himself to what he knew was his purpose. Um, and I would like to uh, say that he maintained a good attitude in the face of his suffering, if we could mention it like that. And so that would, um, would coincide with what the previous speaker was uh, saying. Uh, can you just read that verse for us again? Strong. Yes, it comes from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 14, reading from the New International Version. Um, from verse 33, it says, He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. That, that, that was his... I love that. Overwhelmed with sorrow. And uh, lots of our viewers watching this telecast, this midweek Bible study, are overwhelmed. The situation is very devastating, the COVID-19 crisis. But although Jesus was uh, in deep sorrow, today we celebrate the fact uh, that those sorrows, those crises did not take him out, did not cause him to lose focus. And this is a strong reminder to all of us that in spite of what we may be going through in our personal lives, in the life of this nation, all the inhabitants of earth, we can look to the one who is able to give us that grace which will prove to be more than sufficient for us. I said to us last week, weeping may what endure for a night. You may be in deep sorrow, distress, but God is able. Keep looking to him, for he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Is there anyone else that would like to do? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, panelists, um, and all of you viewing us from uh, your homes or wherever you are online. We're truly blessed to have you this afternoon. Bishop, I'm still stuck on a statement that you just made about um, Jesus never having, not having an easy time of it. And sometimes you get the impression from Christians that, you know, Jesus had this lovely, beautiful life and that, you know, was 
from all things bright and, and beautiful. And you've oftentimes admonished us about thinking that way, and even with the, with the, with the passage of Brother Greg, we just read. This was a man who was confronted, and as we said, tempted in all points, like as we are. Amen. He was confronted with sorrow. He was confronted with issues uh, uh, from every level. And I'm still on the extreme difficulty aspect of the crisis, because what that presents for us, Bishop, is an opportunity to examine uh, Jesus, not only at the point of the cross, but leading up to the cross, and what caused him to make the statement that he made when um, that Brother Greg we just read there for us about his about the extreme sorrowful state that he was in. And if we were to, if our if our, if our friends joining us and even us here can find Matthew chapter 12, it gives us some degree of understanding mm -hmm. of of of, of, the, of, of the, the trials that Jesus had leading up. To this very point and this is what it says i won't read the entire thing but in matthew chapter 12 we can begin at verse 9 it says then jesus went over to their synagogue where he noticed a man with a deformed hand uh, the pharisees asked him trying to trap him of course and we'll see a little later on in the study if we get time to how many times they attempted these things to put jesus in a difficult spot put him in a place where he could not to try to the crisis, the crisis of opposition. Of opposition, and he had many of those. Bishop yes. he was constantly attacked. His personal, his uh, personality, his ministry, it was constant attack. But this point, I wanted to make that he was about to to to, to, to help help someone, and the, and, and the scribes and Pharisees tried to trap him at that mm -hmm. very point. He says, um, "Does the law permit persons to work?" And he asked them on that question. But I wanted to come down to verse thirteen. It says, um, then he said to the man, listen, I'm going to go ahead and heal you. Hold out your hand. So the man held out his hand and it was restored um, just like the other one. So Jesus did perform the miracles. And this is a statement that baffles me, that causes me to appreciate some of the pain that Jesus went through. It says, then the Pharisees called a meeting to plot how to kill Jesus. <laughs> Now you gotta understand that this is not a part of talk name situation, somebody don't like you in the office or your neighbor, and you got a little quiet with foul or defense. This, this, this is because you're doing good. This man didn't beat somebody, he didn't rob somebody. Jesus wasn't trying to steal or to destroy the kid, which is what the devil does. Mm. Jesus was trying to heal and to restore and to lift up and to build. And in the midst of that, they said, No, 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 you can't be doing that, that much good. You can't be healing people. You can't be blessing people. You can't be helping people because that's what it boils down to. I know they put the whole law and the Sabbath as the forefront, but they're really saying you cannot do good here. And so because of that, we will plot to kill you. Yeah, I said um, earlier uh, that the message of Jesus didn't sit well with the religious authority. Yes. And um, those who refuse to accept truth will always find excuses for not doing so and will like they did to Jesus seek to plot so that the truth will not go forth but as you were mentioning and even as Deacon uh, Citram mentioned earlier about the intense suffering I was reminded of the words of Isaiah in chapter 53 here is what it says who has believed our message? Who? You see, again, we go back to the issue of the message. It was one that was controversial, but factual. It was not one that people wanted to hear, but it was the saving message, the message of salvation. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Hear this now. He referring to Jesus, and this is Isaiah's prediction 720 years before Jesus actually came on the scene. He grew up before him like a tender plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was, note these words, he was despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces. 
he was despised and we esteemed him not but it is important for us to understand to recognize to accept that Jesus did not suffer because of personal sin he died for the sins of all mankind Amen. and this is the glorious message of Easter for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life Isaiah goes on to say surely he took our infirmities and carried our sorrows yet we considered him stricken by God smitten by him and afflicted but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his bones we are healed he paid the price he did not owe we owed the death we could not pay he did it all for us is there anything you wish to say at this point minister Helen? Um, there is a saying no cross no crumb there you go that has been colloquially used by many often in an attempt to encourage others who are facing difficult times so as to offer them an incentive to persevere through their, tri their times of trials this phrase is also really a line in a song, an old hymn of the faith. And the Bible also validates this phrase in Hebrews 12, 2, which says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. As I said before in last week's uh, uh, study. No one enjoys crisis moments, but behind crisis moments, there can be a great new day, great new awakening, triumphs, and victories. Jesus is a unique Son of God, and yet the human side of him cringed at the thought mm -hmm. of having to go through his crisis moment yes. of his crucifixion on the cross of Calvary. We hear him say in Matthew, Chapter 26, verse, verse 39 in the King James Version. Oh, my Father, if it be possible, mm. let this cup pass from me. My God. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. There was no other way out. It was the only through the cross mm. that Jesus Christ, the supreme Son of God would be able to carry out the plan of God. He was born to die. He had to give his life's blood as a ransom to rescue lost mankind who was sold over by sin to Satan. For the Bible declares in Hebrews 9.22 and without shedding of blood is no remission. I'm just wondering at this point in time. Yes. Any one of you can jump in. What, what motivated Jesus? What was the, the driving force? You know, you did read a while ago that scripture which says, for the joy that was set before him. In other words, Jesus knew exactly how this crisis would end. Amen. Not in defeat, Amen. but in total victory for him and for all of us. Hey, Anybody else would like to? God. Go ahead, uh, Deacon Gregory. In fact, in the Gospel according to John, when they came to arrest him in the garden, uh, that's in John 18, he says, knowing all that was about to happen. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, he, he anticipated what was going to happen, but his, his devastation was utterly and completely, um, uh, what should I say? It, it, was, it was a complete devastation on his part. You mentioned uh, Isaiah 53, but in Isaiah 52, there is a verse there that says uh, that uh, there were many who were appalled at him. Okay. His appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any man, 
and his form marred beyond like human likeness. But the prophet also says that he will be raised up and highly exalted. Amen. All Amen. because of the joy, the joy that he had in doing the Father's will and doing this hard task. Nobody else could do it. Nobody else could do it. I know I jumped in a while ago, yes. brilliant, but would you like to continue developing that very good point that uh, you were making a while ago? Uh, Jesus was able to face this crisis moment by committing his life into the hands of God. I want to say in life, there are going to be challenges and some hard times. We will not be able to bear it in ourselves, but as like Jesus committed the keeping of his soul to God, committed his life into God's hand, he had the strength to go through and to come out successfully. The Bible declares that he submitted or committed his life into God's hand. And as we read in Isaiah chapter 53, 10 to 12, we were able to see because he submitted to God and allowed God's plan to be fulfilled through him, we see there were benefits. He was able to accomplish God's eternal plan of redemption for lost mankind. Only Jesus' sinless blood could have purchased lost mankind. The blood of bulls, goats, and sheep, and turtle dove could not suffice. His soul was made an offering for sin. As a child of God, we must not shy away from suffering. Oh, yes. Sufferings will sometimes bring the best out of us and also land us into our eternal purposes. Yes. 1 Peter 5.10 says, But the God of all grace who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, I love that. make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Notice, after we have suffered for a while. The cross for us. The cross, then the crown. <laughs> now, I like that one word, a while. Because God has promised. There is a limit. There is a limit. And God has promised that he will never, ever allow us to go beyond our breaking point. After you have what? Suffered a while. My friends, what we're going through is just for a while. Hallelujah. And our confidence is that as individuals, as a nation, as uh, inhabitants of the earth, this that is happening globally is only for a while. Hallelujah. Let's continue to pray and believe God for his divine intervention. Would you like to continue? For the child of God who is living to fulfill God's eternal plan, the Bible declares in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. We are reminded of this in Genesis chapter 37 to chapter 50. The story of Joseph, aided by his brethren, thrown into a pit, sold into slavery, lied and framed by a woman, thrown into prison by Pharaoh, and finally came out to be the Prime Minister of Egypt. This shows that not, no crisis or turbulent times can stop or end up or destroy a man or woman or child whose purposes and fate is bound up in God. God is great and terrible. Nothing can deter him. His plans rule the world. And nothing nor no one, no circumstances can end his plans. So let us all seek to be hooked to God's purposes by surrendering our lives into his hand. It was Jesus' surrender to God's will that held them securely to the cross and caused him to come out victoriously. as the triumphant Lord and Savior of the human race. So viewers, let us at this stressful time surrender our lives and will to God's keeping power. God many times uses stressful circumstances to accomplish his purposes. You did say, you did say, Minister Elaine, that um, 
all things, quoting from the word of God, all things work together for good. Uh, Deacon Nesta, what good has this crisis or is this crisis doing for all of us? Again, we, we see even in, in this crisis situation that we face that there are great opportunities that present itself. As a child of God, we have the opportunity to experience Him in a great way. We have the opportunity to, to extend our faith and our confidence in Him to see us through this uh, trying time. In our um, church setting, we, we would have seen that a wonderful opportunity has, has presented itself. And, um, you know, given the challenges, we have been able to reach you, um, our dear friends, and many of our, many of our friends and associates that so longed to be a part of what the wonderful ministry we have here at Eccles Assembly are now able to tap into to our sessions. And, you know, we can view this as a, in fact, we do view this as a wonderful opportunity that this crisis has brought us. Many persons are, are now seeking God. You know, they, they come to that realization that, that you know, they, there is need for us to, to, to tap in to the supernatural and to, to depend on God, the source of our strength, the creator, the, the, the center, the one that controls the universe. So opportunities again. Uh, from the crisis all things all things work together for good another good thing coming out of this crisis is that people have been given the opportunity to re-examine their value system life is not just about what we eat what we drink uh, the amount of uh, financial resources we have. Yes. Life is far greater than all of those things put together. And I said last week in the study uh, that Jesus counseled that a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And that is why we are so grateful for the cross and all that it means to us because Jesus died yes. he suffered he died thank God he rose again for a while. and the Bible was for a while that's right for a while and he rose again and today he is alive and alive forevermore Hallelujah. I join with the hymn writer in saying I serve a risen Savior he's in the world today I know that he is living, whatever men may say. Yes. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. Yes. And just the time I need him, he is always here. Yes. What does the prophet say? He lives. He lives. He lives. He lives. Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus lives today. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives yes. within yes. my heart. It is Christ in you, says the word, which is the hope of all glory so this situation yes is causing us to re-examine our values yes to re-examine our values anything that you want to say even, Deacon Paul yes and even Bishop for those who are still doubting or those who still have question marks or for those who are still blaming God because there have been those persons coming out of the woodwork who are still saying why would God let this happen and all of this stuff there's a particular thing to note that our symbol Christianity is the cross. The cross is a place where, 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 where there's extreme difficulty. Crisis, the, the very cross, signifies that, 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 that there's nothing easy about the life that Jesus lived. And what God did, what, what God, if God did, as, as we were told, if God didn't spare his own son, Amen. why would we sit down and expect that all of a sudden we won't endure anything? But what is important to note, Bishop, is that Jesus said this. He says, that I will never leave you nor to save you. He says, when you're in the trial and the tribulation, the temptation, he says, I will be with you. Amen. He even goes on to say, I will make a way. So he never said that you won't face misery, you won't fail to face difficulties, you yes. won't face crisis, but he says that I will make a way for you. Yeah. 
If I'm so for those who are doubting or those who are still asking these questions, know that God never said that it would not be difficult. But what He promised is that He will be the one to make it right. If I might, it will be for a while. I that was just pointed out. Yes, well. If I might add to that, Deacon Paul, you know, it, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24, He said, Whosoever wants to be my disciple, mm. speaking to each and every one of us, firstly, there's the opportunity for each and every person to be a disciple, a follower, one that, that takes on what Jesus did to come into an experience of that uh, fulfillment of purpose like, like Jesus did. We, we said earlier that he was driven, you know, what, what motivated him? He was driven to fulfill the plan of God which he knew and despite, despite all of the challenges that he faced, you know, it's as though he was saying, I know I can do this for the sake of mankind. We spoke about what rested on his shoulder. What was his passion? His passion was to see the lost recovered, see the lost come into a relationship. He said this, and, and the word of God says that, that he said, the word of God says that he came to give not only life, but to give it more abundantly. And this is what he said, he said, whosoever, each and every one of us, whomever desires to be my disciple must first deny himself, must first come to a recognition that you know what, I must suffer, I must give up, I must make a sacrifice. And he says, not only that you must deny um, themselves, or not only must they deny themselves, but they must what? Take up their cross and follow him. Hallelujah. Each and every one has to come to that realization that to fulfill the purpose of God, the will of God, the plan of God for our lives, firstly, we must come into a recognition of what that purpose is, come into an acceptance of Jesus Christ, and then we can go through life, the, the challenges of life, the, the experiences of life, knowing that He is by our side, and we can come through successfully like he did, victorious, conquering above all. Hallelujah. Just two closing, just two closing comments uh, from me. Um, you stress that word, whosoever. And I want to remind our viewers that Christianity is all-inclusive. Jesus died for all mankind. Yeah. He paid the full price. And that is why we read in the word, whosoever will may come. Nobody is excluded. Hallelujah. Regardless of race, color, or creed. Yeah. Christianity is all inclusive. Yeah. It is Praise not God. exclusive. And Deacon Paul, uh, you did make the powerful observation that lots of people are blaming God. If there is a God of love, why did he allow this to happen to us? Very now, I would not be the one to declare that God has deliberately and intentionally did this. But uh, many times, God uses crisis situations yes. to get people's attention. And look at what is happening, like we mentioned earlier. Um, lots of people are beginning to think differently. They are beginning to re-examine their values, their life values. And uh, we need to trust God and believe Him that during this season, more people will come to the realization that life is more than just having a good time eat, drink, and be merry. Now, a closing comment from each of you. We are streaming live from the Echoes Assembly of God right here in Guyana, and this is our online version of our midweek Bible study. A closing comment beginning from my extreme left. Thank you, Bishop, and good evening once again, viewers. Tonight, I just would like to uh, encourage you that this evening could be your turning point. 
this evening, uh, you have an opportunity for this crisis to become your time of revelation, your time of victory, your time of uh, learning to trust Jesus through this situation and see Him work on your behalf. Amen? Um, God is a mighty God and you have to learn to trust Him to see Him at work. And God told uh, one of the rulers a, a secret when Jesus was talking with him in the Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter, he said, God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, we did mention that word a little uh, up earlier, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God bless you. Minister Eden. I want to say that man's extremities are God's opportunities That's to work on our behalf and to show himself great on our behalf. Yes. So even this time of difficulty, it can be the turning point of your life to see God as he is. Great, big and wonderful and powerful. Yes, I know, I know this crisis situation has caused many to think about the purpose of life and here again we have a wonderful opportunity to experience God because we believe that God is the one the creator that has created each and every one of us and knows the purpose for our life and I trust that we will tap into him so that we can establish our purpose. Uh, Deacon Paul, if someone is watching this telecast who desires to know Christ in a personal way. What would you say to that person? I would encourage you to, right now, uh, to understand that the gospel, the good news of salvation, is not a frivolous, by the way, gimmick or any such thing. It is a serious expression of God's love towards us in that His Son Christ Jesus died on the cross. Today being Wednesday, today is the day that schemes were being put in place and plots were working in the background to get Jesus to the point whereby he would be crucified. Hallelujah. And so just to remind you in, 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 on, on Friday that Jesus Christ suffered tremendous and extreme cruelty so that you and I could have this opportunity to be here today so that you can have the opportunity and the hope. And so what I say, what I would say to somebody today is don't take this opportunity lightly. Yes. Don't reserve it for another day as you can see in the twinkling of an eye the COVID came and disrupted the entire world in a split second, two months, the entire world shut down. Why do you believe that you have control over anything after this? Yes. So if you don't, then you have to be able to accept and walk in the, what God is providing for you. Amen. And that is His love truth accepting him as your Lord and Savior. Praise God. Will you pray for such persons they can talk? Praise the Lord. Let us pray right now. Father, we thank you for those persons who are online right now, stretching forth their hands yes. right now as a sign, Father, that they are interested in you way beyond God the casual. Yes. There are persons today, God, who are seeing you as their only hope. And for yes. those persons, we pray right now, God, that you will touch. We pray even now that they will be able to, Father, experience you in such a mighty yes. way. We invite you even now to repeat after me, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We come to you today. Having heard this word, having heard this word, I pray that you will accept me. I pray that you will accept me as your servant, as your servant, and as your child, and as your child. I no longer desire. I no longer desire to live in the world of sin. To live in the world of sin. And I pray that you will forgive me of all of my sins. And I pray that you will forgive me of all of my sins. Blot out my transgressions. Blot out my transgressions. And cleanse me of my iniquity. And cleanse me of my iniquity. I declare today. I declare today. That you will be my God. That you will be my God. And you will be my Savior. And you will be my Savior. I thank you for accepting me now. I thank you for accepting me now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends. That's all the time we have. Please remember to join us this Friday at 9.30 in the morning for our Good Friday service. And we'll be back with you on Sunday. Uh, online all the time. Online. We'll be back with you on Sunday at 9.30 for our resurrection service. And on Sunday, 
we will be breaking bread. We'll be having Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper online. No meetings in the building, but we will be with you this Friday at 9.30 in the morning for our Good Friday service and on Sunday for our Resurrection Sunday service, all beginning at 9.30. Until the Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Bye for now. God bless you, everyone.